Assalamu alaikum, welcome to another episode and my name is Othman Abdurashid and today's episode we're going to be talking about business. Now I know that we've, in the past episodes we've talked about so many things, how to grow your business, how to start a business, how to get ideas for your business. But I realized that a lot of us might not even know what is a business, right? And that's why maybe we struggle because you see one of the things that we need to understand is for you to be able to grow something, for you to be able to deploy something, you must understand how to define it. And honestly, one of the best definitions I've seen about a business is in a book called Personal MBA by Josh Kaufman. And in that book, he talks about five key things that every business must do. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. We'll define those five key things and you get to assess yourself whether you are doing those things in your business right now. And I'll take them one by one. And he says that a business is a repeatable process. What does it, and you hear the word repeatable. It means that all the five things that we're going to do, you must repeat it all the time. Not as if sometimes you do it, sometimes you don't do it, right? So it's a repeatable process that creates and delivers something of value. That's the first criteria. The first criteria means that a business must be something that is creating and delivering something of value. And what does that mean? What does something of value mean? You see, a lot of times, business owners start something and they push it to market and at the end of the day they struggle and they say nobody's buying the reason why nobody's buying is because you haven't shown the value in that thing or the people that you are trying to deliver the value for don't find it valuable so for example imagine if you you go and meet somebody that is thirsty in the desert and you say you want to give the person a million naira or you give the person a bottle of water at that point in time, what is more valuable to the person? That one million naira or the bottle of water? It has to be the bottle of water. Because even if you give him the one million naira, if he ends up dying of thirst, then of what use is it? So that's why a lot of, that's one of the things that business owners must understand. At every point in time, you must ask yourself, this product or service that I'm selling, that I'm pushing out, is it of value? And if it's of value, who is it of value for? That's why in the last, um, in one of the episodes behind, we talked about customer segment. And we said that for you to be able to grow your business, the first thing you need to do is you must know who your ideal customer is. Once you identify who your ideal customer is, then you know what is of value to them. And then you start to create a product or a service that is of value to that customer. So ask yourself this question. The product that you are selling right now, is it of value? And how do you know if it's of value or if it's not? You ask yourself, what is the problem that that product or service is solving? If your product or service is not solving a problem, then it means that it's really not of value. The bigger the problem that you're able to solve, the more value that you'll see in the market. The second um, definition, so after creating and delivering something of value, the second thing is that a business is a repeatable process that, we said it creates and delivers something of value. The second thing is that other people want or need. So it's not just important for you to create something of value, but people must want it or need it. Now, how do you know, how will you be able to assess if, some, if people want or need your product? First, first things first is you must always carry out market research. And one of the easiest ways that you carry out market research before you come up with a new business or before you go into a particular market is to ask people questions. You send out questionnaires, you can send it out in text format, you can actually have one-on-one -on -one conversations with people. And the question is simple. As regards this particular thing, so let's say for example, you want to open a gym, right? If you want to open a gym and you're wondering, okay, how can I do it? Is there a market for this gym? You go to the area that you want to open a gym and you ask people, because remember, gym is about fitness. And if you remember in the past episode, we talked about every business does is three markets that you sell to if you're trying to create a business or you're trying to come up with an idea. Remember, say so first, you, are, you must be helping people make more money, which is wealth, or you must be helping people improve their health, or you must be helping people improve their relationships. So, in the, in a gym is under which of these three? Health, right? So you ask people, what is your biggest problem as regards your health? Right? And they'll tell you the problem. 
Sometimes they tell you, oh, it's because I eat too much. Oh, it's because I don't have way to work out. Oh, I don't have motivation. Then you begin to understand what the problem is. So sometimes you might want to start a business. But when you do your market research, you realize that the thing that you are trying to, to develop, the product or service you are trying to sell, is not what people want. So for example, imagine if you go to a place where, or you, maybe you go to a farm, all the people there are farmers, and you say you want to open a gym in the farm, in the area where all of them are farmers. You go there, you ask them what's your biggest problem with, with their health. They tell you, we don't have any problem, we are fit. You see all of them muscular and everything. Because they are going to the farm and they are, they are well, you know, they are, they are well built. But if you go, if you, if you situate your gym where most of the people are office workers and they are sitting down and, you know, they are not very active, then you can now, um, you can start to sell. So that's why it's important for you to make sure that before you start a business, it has to be something that people want or need. The third thing, the third thing you need to look at in your business is whatever product or service that you have created, which is of value, then you identify that people want it or need it. The third question you must ask yourself is, are you selling it at a price that they are willing to pay? And this is where a lot of business owners get it wrong. They come out, they put a price that they just feel that that's the price that it should be. And guess what happens? People are not willing to buy it. And so you must understand that whatever product or service you are selling to whichever client you want to sell it to, you have to know the client very well to the point where you understand that whether that product or service is at a price that they are willing to sell. I'll give you an interesting scenario. You see, the Nigerian economy has been you know, dwindling in the past couple of years. And there's something that has happened now in our economy which is called the sachetization of the economy. And what does that mean? It means that the things that will sell are things that are sold in sachet. If you look at it, everything now that you can think about has been sold, even, G, even bleach. There's such a bleach now. Why? Because there's no dis the disposable income. People don't have money. So instead of them to buy a whole bottle of bleach, they'll just buy a sachet that they use for that particular wash. Even things like um, 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 cooking gas. Before, for you to buy cooking gas, you have to buy the 12.5. But now there's the small 3 kg, there's the 6 kg and all that. Why? It's because of the saturation of the economy. So pig milk, for a long time, pig milk felt like a premium brand, a premium milk. And so they didn't really, um, you know, they didn't really want to sell, sell in sachet. But as the economy was going, they were doing their market research and they started to realize that Luko, if they are going to compete with the likes of Cowbell, they needed to come up with their sachet. And so they created it. So you must always ask yourself, the product or service that you are selling, are people willing to buy? Once you see that you've put out a product or service, you've talked about it, talked about it to the ideal client and none of them is buying, then you must ask them, why, what is the reason why they are not buying? If you're able to ask intelligent questions, you will start to see good answers and you realize that maybe it might be the price. And if it's the price, you can see what you can do. Either you reduce the quantity to just give them that thing. Look, even cornflakes now is sold in sachet, where you just get one sachet and you, 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 you buy it and you go, right? The fourth thing that a business does, now I'll, I'll, let me recap. A business is a repeatable process that creates and delivers something of value that people want or need at a price that they are willing to pay, right? And the fourth thing is in a way that satisfies the customer. And I think that this is the critical point where a lot of business owners don't really get it right. What does it mean to satisfy a customer? You see, customer satisfaction is the lifeblood of your business because the only time a customer will come back is if, you, if they are satisfied or if you exceed their satisfaction. Now, for you to be able to grow your business, you must even know what is customer satisfaction, right? Customer satisfaction is simply what is the perception of what the customer wants versus the actual delivery of the product. So let's say, for example, a customer thinks that, oh, you can't deliver within 24 hours, and you deliver within 24 hours. Have you met their, their expectation? Yes. If a customer feels like you should deliver in, in, in an hour and you deliver in, in 24 hours, are you, have you met their satisfaction? No. 
which is why a lot of times, I mean, a lot of Nigerians, when we see that there's light 24 hours for a full day, we start to wonder what's going on. Why? Because we already have a, an, a, an expectation. And if our expectation is exceeded, we start to become uncomfortable, right? So you must understand what is the what is the standard that your customer wants in their in in the in in them using your product or service i'll give you an example there's a there's a lady i saw the other day and it was on instagram it was on social media everywhere she was selling small chops so small chops samosa spring rolls all those things so samosa and spring rolls is it something of value let's let's assess it based on what i talked about yes it is something of value that people want or need. Is it what people want or need? Yes, people want and need it. Maybe for weddings, maybe for, you know, walima, maybe for classes, different kind of things, right? At a price that they are willing to pay. Obviously, somebody bought that small shop, so it was at a price that somebody was willing to pay. But guess what this woman did? She put these small shops, the samosa and the spring rolls, inside a black nylon and delivered it to the person. And the person was like, oh my God, I can't believe this. The person snapped it and posted it on social media. You see, that particular business owner did not deliver that product in a way that the customer needed. And so that, that, that business owner flaunted this fourth principle. So you must understand that you must deliver your product or service in a way that not only does it satisfy your customer but it exceeds their satisfaction so you might have you might be selling food and your food is sweet but maybe your 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 waiters talk to your customers anyhow they insult their customers maybe your your restaurant is hot there's no ac there's no fan people come there they are sweating you are not delivering your product or service at a way that is going to satisfy your customer right so that's just a a, a little example that i think you can use the fifth one so the fifth one is so the business brings in enough revenue to keep the business owner in business so let's recap the five things one a business is a repeatable process that creates and delivers something of value one two that people want or need three at a price that they are willing to pay four they must deliver it in a way that satisfies the customer's expectations for and then five and must do that in a profitable way to keep the business owner in business and this is where a lot of business owners struggle because a lot of times they do all those four but that business is not able to bring in enough revenue for the business owner to stay in business and how do you know whether your business is bringing enough revenue for you it's simple check and see how much is your expenditure as a person? You must first understand personal finance before you can understand business finance. So check your personal finance. How much do you need in your business to stay in, as a person, as a human being, to stay afloat? Now ask yourself the question, can your business pay you salary worth that amount that you need as a human being to survive? If your business cannot pay you, then there's a problem. You might want to think about diversifying your business to other things, not shutting down the business, but diversify and find other income streams so that you can boost up the revenue of the business so that it can pay you. Because if it doesn't pay you, guess what will happen? You become frustrated. Somebody calls and they are ordering for small chops. They are shouting on the person. Why? Because they are like, mm, this thing you are even selling, this thing you, are even, you want to buy, it's not even going to satisfy me. I'm not even going to make money at the end of the month that will be enough for me. So you must also always check and see what is it that you need to be able to survive as a human being, just you and your family. And then ask yourself, can the business fund your lifestyle? If the business cannot fund your lifestyle, then you now ask yourself another question. Because you see, the quality of life that we live is determined by the quality of questions we ask ourselves. So instead of saying that, oh, you know, this business cannot satisfy my needs, you ask yourself a smarter question by saying, how can this business satisfy my needs? And then you see what are the other things that you can do? What are the strategies that you can use to be able to see how you can grow your business? And I'm sure that if you do these five things, inshallah, you see that your business will continue to grow and um, you will see that you start to make revenue that is important. But make sure that you are always understanding what your customers want and need and you are continually 
supplying them and not only just supplying them but you are exceeding their expectations thank you for joining us it's been amazing having you in all these episodes i hope that this particular episode has also added more value to you like i said don't hesitate keep your keep bringing in your suggestions bringing in your questions and inshallah i know that we'll find time to answer those questions in the in the future episodes thank you very much i am othman abdrashid salamu alaikum goodbye Ramadan Mubarak